My dad left us for his affair partner now he's demanding I move out of my own home. My parents divorced three months ago and things have been incredibly hectic for me and my mother. As my father earns less than my mother in the divorce, he asked for the house we were living in. He did not get the house because I am the owner of it. He insisted that he wanted to stay in the house because it is closer to his job, while my mother can shift as my mother's office was a three-hour drive from our home, but 30 minutes drive from my grandparents' house. As this was an amicable settlement, there weren't any papers signed, but my mother told me that I'll have to live with my dad. I hated every bit of it, but my mother, like always, told me that just because they are going through a divorce does not mean I am supposed to help my dad out, so I should simply adjust. I could have told her that I do not wish to be stuck adjusting like she was, but I held my tongue. Fast forward to now. My dad married his affair partner two months into the divorce, and not only that, he brought her home with him. It pissed me off seeing her in the house that I grew up in, trying to take the role of my mother, but I still did not cause a scene because of everything. I was doing my best to ignore her entire existence and mind my own business. I did not get in her way and made sure that she did not get in mine. I barely spoke with my dad, and every day after I came home from college, I would go back to my room. Now, when my father told my mother that he is divorcing her, my mother kicked him out of the house, the one good thing she did, and he lived with the AP until the court hearing was done. During this time, my mother shifted me into the master bedroom because she did not want his side chick sleeping in the same bed as she did. I understood her logic and I moved into the master bedroom. We burnt the mattress together because my mom knew that the AP had dropped by our house and she did not want me on that bed like she had to. We also threw out the couch. I caught them making out on when I was 16. So, relevant to the story, I have the master's bedroom. The bitch not only stole my dad but also dared to sit me down on a weekend while my dad is there and tell me that she needs me to move out of the master bedroom because she is about to be four months pregnant and staying in the master bedroom would be incredibly comfortable for her. I looked at her audacity and I told her no. I told her that the room she sleeps in, the guest bedroom, has an attached bathroom. She would not require the master's bedroom for that and I left the conversation because I thought I was being logical and it made sense, but not to her. Two days later, she told me that she is done living with me. She does not want any strangers in the house when she's pregnant and wants me to move out to the university dorms. I asked my dad if he was the one who put her up to this and my dad said how I should look at the family and take care of the unborn child because I'm older. I laughed in their face and told the SM that she is more than welcome to leave the house if she does not like the room allotted to her. She turned to my dad and said something akin to, you are going to let your son speak to me like that? Before my dad could say anything, I told her that she can take him with her to whatever place that they would be better suited for, because I own this house and I do not wish to live in the same house with ungrateful people like her. She started screaming at my dad because she was under the assumption that he was the owner of the house. I told both of them that they had an hour to pack whatever they needed and I needed them to leave. I was done seeing my dad and her pretending to be a happy family in the house which they kicked my mom out of. They left eventually after screaming at me a bunch and then received calls from my mom. She said I'm an extremely selfish person just like my father and I have been wondering if I was truly selfish for kicking them out. I will try to give the backstory here because a lot of you had been asking about that. I'm 22 male and I have known about my dad's infidelity since I was 16 and walked in on him kissing a woman in our living room. He is a teacher at the local middle school and my mother is an architect. Both of them led extremely busy lives but I never thought that my father would stoop so low as to cheat on my mother like this. When I tried to tell my mother about it, the way she reacted made it pretty obvious that she was in denial. It was not even a subtext that my dad had been cheated on my mom for a while, and my mom knew about it but refused to accept the truth. I tried to tell her about this whole situation repeatedly but she refused to listen. She simply could not fathom the idea that her high school sweetheart was over her. I told her to confront him and every time I did I was the one she took her rage out on, calling me disrespectful towards my father. It was strange seeing the farce of a relationship they had, and how tightly my mom clutched onto that facade of a happy relationship. It was sad. When I confronted my father, my father asked me what I was planning on doing about it. It was not like I have any options and if I bothered him too much about it, it would not be an issue for him to kick me out. He reminded me that I am almost 18 and it will not be unheard of if he were to kick me out. So yeah, the situation was pretty bad. When I told my mother about this thinly veiled threat, she told me that she can make sure that he can no longer threaten me like this but I have to promise to listen to everything she said, which included I had to pretend to be oblivious to my dad's cheating. When I told her that I do not want to play these games of charade but my mom insisted that we must care about the image of the family and we mustn't air out the dirty laundry. It was funny hearing her say that, 
because my dad has done everything to make it obvious he did not care. I had no idea why she cared, but I wanted to respect her wishes, so I agreed. My mom was the owner of the house, so it was pretty easy changing the ownership. That's pretty much how I ended up with a house in my name. The reason why I couldn't move out of my house was that I am a self-funded student. My home is near my university and I am working my way through college to graduate without a huge student debt. It would have been extremely hard on me if I were to move out. That's why my dad could threaten me but as far as everything else is going my mom is still upset with me because of the fiasco I did. My dad has been calling me names because how dare I kick him and he's expecting a fair partner on the streets but I have got a feeling he's madder at me for making sure his bitch of a wife knew what lying bastard he is because he didn't bother telling her that the house was mine even though he knew. My grandparents, mom's parents, learned about what I did and told me that they want to have a chat with me. I don't know if I want to go there as my mom is living with them right now. Honestly, I have no idea why my mother decided to move out the way she did, but it is what it is. Should I do it? I don't want to have her call me selfish to my face again because I do not think that I was. My mom is moving back with me. I went over to my grandparents' house after uni. It's a three-hour drive from my uni and I planned on staying over for the weekend. My grandparents looked angry with me and I understood their attitude. The conversation was very tense and I was genuinely worried that they were going to go off on me. When mom came back after work she was surprised to see me, but she didn't look angry anymore. We hugged after two months of barely being able to see each other, and I low-key felt emotional. She festered over me a little talking about how I looked tired and stressed which is true. I wasn't taking care of myself that much and having AP in my house was irritating. I told her that I'll take care of myself now and that I don't have to deal with APN dad. That brought a shift in the mood. She insisted that I was rude for behaving the way I did. I was supposed to be mature and responsible. I told her that I was both because I did take care of the person I loved. She refused and started saying how kicking an expecting woman out on the streets was not me taking care of her. That's where my grandparents interjected. They told her to understand that kicking out that woman wasn't the best way of showing my love, but given she did ruin my mom's marriage, it's only fair that she gets the same. Karma is a bitch, and it was time for her to get served. I am paraphrasing, but that is pretty much how this went. My mother seemed to consider what they were saying. I told mom that she owned the house before I did, and she was the one who paid for it. Dad did nothing to help her out and instead cheated on her. There's no reason why she must be nice to him or his AP when he hasn't shown the same decree. I asked her to come home with me and my grandparents agreed. They told her to go home with me. My mom said she'll think about it, and last night she told me that she will. So we will be driving home tomorrow, and as far as dad is concerned last I heard that he is moving in with AP into her parents' basement so that's pretty much it. You are N-T-A-A-P. The only a hole in this story is your dad. He cheated on your mom and then moved into the same house with his affair partner. He's so entitled. A mom is too harsh on you, op. You are N-T-A. I would have done the same. My daughter and I have had our fair share of difficulties. We get along better now but since I don't see her as often as I'd like to. The times when we do see each other is important. She usually celebrates Christmas with my family since her mom is an agnostic Jew, and it's an important time for us. My daughter was previously my son, and came out as transgender to me two years ago. I honestly blame the last Christmas she spent with my family for her telling her mother so long before me. I think she has been uncomfortable with my family and missed the past few years because my family reacted badly about her coming out as being attracted to men. She doesn't want to be called gay now as in she sees herself as a straight girl. The last Christmas she celebrated with us. It was my mistake for telling them at all but I didn't know how to cope with it at the time. They were saying some things to her which weren't right especially since she was really just a kid and she reacted by crying and literally running out which just escalated everything. At first I was excited to have her agree to Christmas with my family again but now I'm realizing that what happened is going to be that but much worse. I don't want to see my daughter crying again and I want to improve our relationship. My solution seems to be causing more issues. I was thinking I could celebrate Christmas with my family without her and then do a separate Christmas celebration with her. I even told her she could bring her boyfriend something she would not be able to do if she went to my family's Christmas. The issue is the only other days around that time that I'm free I'm doing Christmas with my fiancé's family and then me and the guys, being friends since high school, have this tradition that I can't skip. My fiancé is also struggling to be accepting so I can't bring my daughter to her family's Christmas either. My daughter was upset because I had talked about how great our Christmas was going to be since we hadn't seen each other in a while. I said that we're still going to have a great Christmas and honestly a better one without my family. She says she doesn't care about not being able to celebrate with my family. She says that she wanted to celebrate with me and I told her she still will. 
she started saying that she's always the lowest priority in my life and that she doesn't want to try to have a relationship with me anymore. For any other dads out there, I'm pretty sure you can understand why I'm writing here. That shit hurt. But there's nothing else I can really do so would I be the a-hole. I thought she was just being sensitive, but typically when your kid is being sensitive, it's still important. I know that from experience. Buddy, your daughter has told you that she's the lowest priority in your life because you've shown her that? That shit hurts? That's because it's true and you know it. Yaita, ask your daughter what she needs from you and do it. If you want this to be right, you are her father. Act like it. Yubabiyobiyoda, if your daughter is your priority, make her your priority. Pick her, ask her how she wants to celebrate, whether it's just the two of you or whatever family she wants to celebrate with. She should never be made to feel uncomfortable because she's trans. She should come first. She's more important than your high school buddies, your fiancé who is struggling to be accepting or your family who made her cry. And by telling her that you can't change these commitments, you're telling her that they're more important than her. They're not. I, 30 female, have been friends with my friend Mary, 27 female, for roughly five years. We're completely different people who met at work and somehow became pretty close friends. Three years into our friendship, Mary started becoming sick. No one really knew what was going on, but it all escalated into her passing out at work and needing ambulance to get to a hospital. I could sense she was scared because she didn't know what was wrong with her. I took it extremely serious and stood by her side through it all. Whenever she texted or called me because of her medical emergency, aka her being scared to collapse or faint randomly, I'd immediately answer and go see her. I spent many days by her side and often spent all day accompanying her until her husband or a direct family member took over. This all went on for roughly a year until she was finally diagnosed with severe anxiety and panic disorder. She did get it treated through therapy and returned to a new normal, being able to do things alone again. In the meantime, my life had changed drastically. I found a new job, met my now husband, and we moved into our own place. Naturally, we hadn't seen and spoken much during that time because I was so busy. Anyway, I found out that Mary's condition had gotten worse recently when she called me in the middle of the night asking me to accompany her until her husband would be back from work. I did go to see her and upon asking her why therapy was no longer helping, she claimed she quit therapy because she wanted to get through it on her own. I asked her if her family knew but she said she didn't want to worry them so they don't know. Her husband knows. D. Well, her calls became more frequent again. But this time it was hard for me to just leave everything and be there for her. At first I was there for her again, but with time, I just didn't have the energy to do so anymore. Her requests became irrational and more demanding, and while I have sympathy for her and her condition, I see no point in putting up with it if she's refusing proper medical help, let alone help from her immediate family. I started making up excuses why I couldn't help her at certain times. It all boiled down to last Thursday when I got a message from her at 4 a.m. asking me to take her to her parents' place because she was having a medical emergency. I saw the message but I ignored it because I just couldn't take it anymore. In fact, I ghosted her and went back to sleep. The next day I pretended to have slept through her texts and found out she had managed to stay at home until her husband got there but she didn't fail to make me feel bad for ignoring her messages. She's given me the cold shoulder since. I know she's mad I didn't answer or help her when she needed me. I do feel guilty but I thought if it really was an emergency, she could call an ambulance. So Reddit Ada for ignoring my friend during another one of her medical emergencies, NTA at all. So many people feel so entitled to make their medical problems other people's responsibilities whether it may be mental or physical. I also do sympathize with Mary and I understand how much you have tried to help but she needs to understand that you are not her on-call caretaker. If she wants that, then she needs to look into a professional or a consenting adult that is okay with playing such a role. Clearly you have started to put up your boundaries and I commend you for that. She isn't thinking about how this can affect your own physical and mental health, as well as those around you like your husband and potential future pets and children. I would suggest just having a conversation with her about it and explaining how you are simply not capable of playing this role for her. Although you want to be a part of her life and support her, you cannot be who she calls every time. Your friend is very manipulative and it is not your fault that she refuses to get the help she needs. She's using you as a scapegoat since she has no one else to blame her problems on, and now this is her use for you. Nothing more. You are not a source of comfort for this woman. She wants someone to buy her victim story and to play the blame game when they refuse to comply. I would suggest you go fully no contact. She is a very abusive person by giving you the cold shoulder the one time you wouldn't be at her beck and call, and that says a lot more about her and her condition than what she says about herself. I firmly believe this woman has a serious mental illness. You need to cut her out of your life. It will continue to escalate with a person like this. She needs help that no average person can provide.
NTA next story Ada for yelling at my family for suddenly wanting me in their lives? For some backstory, I 26 FAM a product of my father's affair. My three half siblings, Jacob 36M, Lily 32F, and Helen 30F have never wanted anything to do with me, and at first my father didn't either. When I was around six, though, my mother died. Nobody wanted an affair baby, so I ended up living with my father and his family after all. I was treated differently, like a guest in their home. I could tell my father resented me for ruining his family. I tried my best to make my siblings like me, hoping they'd warm up to me eventually, but they made it clear they never wanted a relationship. I know Reddit is generally forgiving of people like my siblings, and that's fine, I get it. They don't have to want a relationship with the brat who tore their family apart. But once I got over trying to beg for their love, I began to hate them. They had two living parents who actually wanted them. College funds, toys, therapy, and siblings who loved them. I had none of that. My father hated me, he barely spent a cent on me, my mother was dead, and they all wanted nothing to do with me, but I was the monster for just being born. It's taken years to accept that I was unwanted by my siblings, but I got through it. I got myself through life, into college, into a good apartment and very well-paying job I love. Recently, though, Lily reached out to me. Apparently, she's pregnant. She says becoming a mother made her realize how important family is, so she wants me in her and the child's life. I admit, I wasn't very cordial. I asked harshly why I'd want a relationship with the people who abandoned and rejected me for so many years. Lily said her baby was innocent in all this and that I owed my nephew a relationship. I admit, I lost it at that, and I ended up screaming at her. Her baby's innocent in this? Where was that attitude when I lost my fucking mom and my entire remaining family rejected me at six years old? Where was that attitude when I practically begged for their love for years? I screamed at Lily that I don't know why she suddenly wants me in her life, whether it's money for the baby or to ease her own guilt, but that she made this bed and now I'd make damn sure she lies in it. Since then I haven't heard from Lily, but Helen and Jacob have been trying to contact me to call me a monster for screaming at my own pregnant sister. I don't feel bad for not wanting a relationship, but admittedly, I lost it a little bit, and now I feel like screaming at Lily may have been too far, especially since stress probably isn't good for the baby. I don't know, am I the asshole here? I feel like I might be. ETA answering a few questions I saw in the comments I answered the comments directly too, but figured they'd be relevant info here one did Lily apologize? Kinda. She said she regretted rejecting me, but she brushed past it quickly and right into talking about other things, which made me feel like she expected forgiveness to be a given and made the whole thing feel insincere to me. I also never directly heard the words I'm sorry from her, so why no? Two, why did I take her call in the first place? To be honest, I thought there was some kind of emergency going on, like that my father was dying or something. I genuinely couldn't see any other reason she'd be calling me. The last time I saw her was when I was 18 and she was 24 and she was mocking me for how I'd have to move out and finally stop leeching off her dad, so I genuinely didn't see any reason to think she'd be contacting me for anything short but a life or death situation. Brief update I've been thinking a lot as I watch the comments roll in. Thank you for all your support, both to the people saying I did nothing wrong and to the people gently suggesting I apologize or that it might be good to mend ties. I don't think I'm comfortable having much of a relationship with Lily. She was cruel to me for my entire childhood for things beyond my control, and I can't just get over that, nor am I impressed with her one-sentence apology. However, I keep thinking about my future nephew, and, well, dot dot, while Lily may be a hypocrite, she's right that this baby is innocent, and I refuse to reject this child for what his mother did. I refuse to be like my siblings or my mother's family in that way. So I've made a decision. I'm going to reach out to Lily and apologize for yelling first and foremost. Then I'm going to make her a deal. I'll take her child out on any auntie nephew days, give her money if he needs anything under the condition that she provides proof of purchase, and potentially attend family events if he's present. However, if she at any point insults me or blames me for what our father did, I'm going to cut her out again. I'm also going to start putting money into a college life fund for him under my name, not Lily's. This is for the child to access when he turns 18, not for her to spend and any of her other future children. I'll make the same deal to my other siblings if they have children as well. Some of you may be upset I don't want a close relationship with Lily and only want to see her child. Some of you may be upset I want to be in my nephew's life at all. But I want to do right by him. He's innocent, after all. And I'm going to lead by example in not punishing children for the sins of their parents.